you have just entered the KD Ma podcast. Keyboard plus mouse or die. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode eight of the KB Mod Podcast. Uh, yeah, this isn't Alex doing the intro this week, though. He did a fantastic job last week. I guess the uh, we decided to hand it over back to me. Alex, uh, are you going to be doing any more intros in the future? I'm sure a lot of our listeners would like to know. Well, we're at a creative loss tonight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> are we? To be honest with you, I think that my intros, while not, I would say, mm. worded yeah. well... Definitely start us off with a mood and a feel. Do they? Like you can, I, I you would can go with audience. Audience your bed and big spoon yourself to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the mood of mood of confusion was really definitely a, a theme when we started there with your intro. Are we live? We're li- <laughs> <There's Dan. laughs> we are live, and we also have uh, we have Brandon on, uh, one of our bro pile bros. Brandon, what's going on? Not much. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. Rare opportunity with you home right now. Yeah, absolutely. Had a good weekend. Nice. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Bob aggressive podcast kit. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna have Bob post on, but uh, he's a little under the weather, so we will have him on next week. He's uh, one of the guys that does all all the behind the scenes stuff uh, for us and is really doing a great job and working on KB Mod 2.0. Right, Dan? Can we say we can't say yes. too much, right? Yes. And okay. And he also. Uh, Trolls real hard. He does. He's a great he troll. He goes hard in the troll. He does. So we'll have to go um, ask you guys. I got to ask. Um, especially, let's start out with Alex this week as far as what we've been what we've been playing we'll game wise it because it'll be real short. Do this as a general what we've been up to. Okay, up to. All right. Well, all right. Good. Good call, down. Nothing. <laughs> you've been up to nothing. <laughs> you've been drink. You've been drinking, Alex. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I'm at that point now where I drink and I don't even get drunk anymore. That's that's called alcoholism in most. Sense. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't. I haven't drank in a while, actually. I just hang out with uh, friends from my school, and uh, we talk about stuff, and uh, it's good times. And uh, welcome to KB Mod episode eight. <laughs> have you, have, here's here's the here's the important question. During your during your time at school, have you found a hole yet? A, a glory hole? <laughs> no, as in something to stick your penis in for the next three years uh, and then oh, never speak like, to after you leave college. <laughs> well, the thing is, is um, we actually had a talk that they they seriously discourage having sex with classmates. Wow. Um, considering that we spend around 10 hours a day, six days a week with them for three years. So bringing... It drinks involved with a bunch of young people, dude. No, but the thing, it happens. But bringing, happen, bringing that kind of that kind of tension into a, a space that's supposed to be creative and free and trusting when you have people yeah. fucking each other left and right <laughs> isn't, isn't the best way to start the year. That's, that's like yeah. if a woman lets you have sex with her, she busts you. There you so go. There's, there's I know, but then, then you come in next week and you hooked up with someone else at a party and it's like, now we can't act together because you Don't hook mad. up with somebody else. Find a hot one and just stick it in her for the next three years and you're straight. <laughs> John's got That's funny that you brought up okay. straight, John, because I was going to mount to ask Alex how the uh, ratios are. In acting you're going to ask me? I was going to ask you, man. Come <laughs> on, get on the podcast. <laughs> That's a good question, though, Scott. I Enough. would like to know that as well. And In, in such a high-end art school, like what's the... Uh, Exactly. What's the ratio of cock to vag? Yeah. It's even, because that's how they pick the classes. So why don't you find a nice boy for the next three years? <laughs> there, there are tons of nice boys who, who would who would, would be make me their bitch, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of burly, real burly actors over there, huh? <laughs> Making you your there is some, I'm like, I can appreciate a damn fine man who that's happens good. to be gay. That's good. It's fun, guys. You should try it. You can I'll, you can decide how you how you want it each weekend. <laughs> it's a liberating what flavor experience. Do I want All right, week? I'm gonna jump in and save this conversation and th- go to Brandon real quick. What have you been up to, Brandon? <laughs> um, so we had a long weekend. Started off with some TF2 on the KB mod server, Strong. and then uh, I've been playing a little bit of Quake Live. Got called a wall hacker last night, so that was a pretty good time. It's always a comp. Did you get low called bob. a low bob, low bob wall hacker? <laughs> No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. But uh, but no. So that was fun. Uh, and what else? A little bit of Counter Strike. A little bit of Bad Company too. I've been spreading it around this weekend. Kind of like Alex is going to be spreading. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What about you, John? What have you been up to? 
Um, playing a variety of shit like I always do. So I have the opposite of uh, OCD. I've been playing TF2. I've been playing Quake. Everyone's not Brandon. I've been playing League of Legends. I've been having nice. sex a lot lately, which is sweet. Nice. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. Get her done. And other than that, like, I just, I don't really do anything. <clears throat> Tonight I'm drinking heavily, though. Oh, nice. nice. What are you I drinking? Can, I, I am drinking Sam Adams Summer Ale. Nice. I'm out of drinks, so I'm jealous. On your picture, you have a you have a PBR in your hand. I do. I always <laughs> picture you with a PBR as we record this podcast, just because of your picture. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. What about uh, what about you, Dan? What have you been up to? Um, I've been hitting the COD four hard lately. Mm. I'm getting back into that. I, I can only play pro mod still to this day. I, I cannot stand regular COD four. I've been doing pretty well on it too on regular. Um, I only play pro mod with, with other people. Like I, I don't know, I just can't do it by myself. Um, but I'm mostly waiting for this baby to get here. Yeah, yeah, she still she hasn't had that baby. Time. Man, she was. Yeah. When when did she do? She passed her due date. It's due is... September 9th. But oh, okay. usually, a lot of the time, you don't even get to your due date. Right. So wow. our first kid we had like three weeks before, and it was it was awesome because then Dan's baby it's less uncomfortable. Baby. All that stuff. <laughs> But now it's just kind of getting old. You know, women are for, at first, they're like, yeah, I'm pregnant, this is sweet, gonna have a baby. And, like, near the end, it's like, fuck this. Let's just get, <laughs> get this thing out of me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I say that every sucks. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly about men, though. Just get this thing out of me. It's hard. I'm so like, glad you caught on to that, Dan. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. That was like a me. That was like a me Twitter clarification that I was getting shit for. <laughs> Thanks, Scott, for pointing out what the joke was there. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's four. It's been about it. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I always like to go last because I have nothing new to offer other than Counter Strike Source. So. Did you play that pro mod <clears> yet? I, I have played. I played pro mod. See, I, I played. Great. Yeah, the early iteration of that before it was, and it's there's so many builds it's gone through. It was hyped up, and I I didn't like it. It, had, it was so glitchy. I was like playing an alpha build way back, so it turned me off. Um, but I haven't. No, I saw or we played it and really liked it. So I might try to try to get into it and see how it is. I my my thing is though, it's like if I want to play 1.6, I'll play 1.6. If I want to play Source, I'll play Source. I, I don't I don't need the two games intermixed. You know so what I mean? basically, it's, it's your party, and you'll cry if you want to. You want to? If I you want. If you want to. If you want to. If I want to cry. <laughs> Alex has been at art school for twelve hours a day, hasn't he? You want to cry now? <laughs> what the fuck, Alex? That's not even an accent. That's a hybrid. Oh, I breathe. Man. I can't even speak. Don't no. come to me. Get my turn. I'm out of here. <laughs> this is... Alex rage quits. Yeah. He's oh, rage. Really? He's rage quit YouTube. He's rage quit Twitter. Now he's gonna rage quit the podcast. Yeah, you better not. Just a progressive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I, I'll try it at some point, but I'm not a big fan of uh, of mixing the two games. But oh. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into. To our topics, uh, unless anyone else said anything that they wanted to talk about about what they've been doing that can be shared legally. <laughs> Nothing. All right. We now interrupt your scheduled programming to bring you an urgent broadcast from the front lines of America. Well, the big thing was obviously um, we had the Call of Duty um, Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer reveal at their big event out in, um, I guess it was in Los Angeles, right? The, yep. um, yeah. Yeah. With thousands of consoles, lots of consoles, yeah. no PCs. Was there really none there the, at all? No, I didn't. No I didn't hear about that. I don't think so. Wow. I think at least Juicer out of the guys that I knew there would have gone and tried to play it. Mm-hmm. At least he would have, if there was. So I highly doubt it. And uh, yeah, and I guess just get get our takes on what you know what's been revealed and all that stuff, Dan. I don't know. I know you've been kind well, of studying a lot of the perks and stuff and. I mean, I think there's a lot of positive here. As as a lot of people said, um, it looks a lot. I think it actually looks more like COD Four in the multiplayer reveal trailer thing than the it ge- does. Yeah, the gameplay maybe, but the the art style is so similar to Modern Warfare Two, which isn't a bad thing by any means. No, it's a good looking game, man. Yeah. yeah. And but uh, the only thing that I'm it's like, still Minecraft. <laughs> The only thing I'm worried about is uh, 
if for the PC, we got our dedicated servers, obviously. We've talked about that, but are they going to let us change our field of view? Is there going to be a lean? Like, we don't know any of that, um, really. I think, I don't know, overall, I'm pretty impressed by what we learned at CODXP. Uh, I didn't see much that turned me off, really. Um, I don't know yeah. if you guys heard about this new game type, this uh, kill confirmed. Pick up the dog tags to confirm the I, kill. Yeah, I think it's sweet, actually. I, I would definitely play I think that would be a great small game type, too, which is the video I saw was, was like 2v2 or something. But I think it would be great for that. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what you guys think, but the, the point streaks is one of the great things to ever come to a Call of Duty game, I think, because now you're going to be rewarded for playing the objective. Which yeah, I think huge. I think the packages like changing changing the kill streaks and having uh, like support streaks to right. where not everyone has to not everyone has to get kills in order to actually help their team out. I think that's a huge um, like positive change. Yeah, but I think from what I've heard though is nothing is ridiculously overpowered except for that juggernaut kill streak. I don't know if you guys. Heard about this? Yeah, but you can only melee with the riot shield. You can't, and you move slow as shit. So, how long does it last? Does it last like a certain amount of time, or? Oh. But which one is that? Is that assault, or is it? I'm um, not sure. I'll have to look. Yeah. It's not even saying on the site. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't even say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right too, Dan. Just talking about impressions from XP, like. I guess really I didn't see anything that that massively uh, uh, turned me off. I guess I guess more it was kind of like the Modern Warfare 2 fatigue. I feel like I feel like because everyone who played it was like Modern Warfare 2.5, and when I heard that, it really kind of yeah. turned me off. Though you know, looking more into it, and looking at some of the stuff they've done and some of the new game types and changes that they seem to be making to try yeah. to balance it, I think it does have a a lot of potential. I mean, and then the dedicated you- servers kind of brought us back into the, you know, why, which right. why we're even talking about it right now. Yeah, so. exactly. There was a dedicated um, server that just wouldn't care. So. Yeah. And I mean, like Modern Warfare 2, if Modern Warfare 2, if you add dedicated servers and you you change up the kill streaks like they're going mm-hmm. to um, and you add some of these other some of these mm-hmm. other things like take away uh, the tubes and one man army and all that. Cycling I mean, through kill streaks too. I got to interject and say that that's here too, which is cool. Which should have been in a Call of Duty a long time ago. Oh yeah, you can choose a yep yeah, which kill streak you're going to use. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Brandon. But no, so yeah, I mean, like adding adding these these things we've been talking about onto Modern Warfare 2 and then having dedicated servers. Yeah. Like that's a game I would play because my whole Modern Warfare 2 experience, uh, since I never really played Alter IW. The whole experience was soured by the fact that there were no dedicated servers, right. and so like my whole experience on the game is sort of biased just because it was so bad because of that one thing yeah. that that I think like this could be a good game because I, I never really gave Modern Warfare Two a fair shake. I don't think. Mm. Yeah, That's like, a fair point. Yeah. What do you think, John? Do you think if they can mod it? I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be mod tools. They said. Uh, I forget where they said it, but I think Bowling or one of those guys said basically all the concessions to PC that Black Ops made will also be made for uh, for the, Modern Warfare 3. The only issue with Black Ops is the map design because right. com- competitive Call of Duty has been and always will be played on Search and Destroy regardless. I mean, Black Ops is clearly designed for domination just by the maps. So it, depend- it depends on the map design how a Modern Warfare 2 will work because... The, the competitive players only want to play Search and Destroy because Counter Strike was the original competitive, you know, huge competitive game anyway. Right. And it kind of like shaped the esports community. So if you can't play Search and Destroy on the game, it's just going to bomb, just like Black Ops did, because they didn't give them Radiant to create their own map. So it's really just their, it's their fault if it doesn't yeah. work. And mm-hmm. esports and having a game that's capable of being played competitively increases the longevity tenfold. I mean, people still buy COD 4, people still buy Counter Strike Source, people still buy TF2. Or I yeah. mean, they they download TF2 now for free, but <laughs> I mean TF2 is still selling well because there's still a competitive scene going this many years later because the game was designed for it. Right. Yeah. True. But yeah. Uh, well, I was going to ask Alex. Alex, I know you have been you have been working 12 hours a day acting, but did you even that, know there was a Call of Duty XP event going on <laughs> this week? Or last I'm week? not even here anymore. I raged because I can't speak English. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you have any thoughts? I knew there was a COD XP. There was Twitter was telling me. Ah, uh, okay. No. I was getting Facebook updates. <laughs> my friends that just got into Call of Duty simply for the XP experience. I mean, <laughs> just getting bombarded social medialy. You know what I'm saying? I'm just making words social up. Social medialy. That's another good one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I heard about it, and I mean, it looks interesting. I watched some of Hutch's gameplay on Machinima Respawn. It's a company some of us work for. It- <laughs> and um, it looked like he Fan had boy. some sort of like quick swap perk on that made the game look really weird. Like it looked like it was like really sped up. And but I don't know. I mean, I'm not really happy that snipers are back to Modern Warfare 2 snipers. I don't think that they should be like they are in like a pro mod like they are now in regular stock Call of Duty just because you just shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to walk around with a sniper. It's, that's not what a sniper rifle is used for in it. And it makes for ballerinas and, and quick scoping montages. And that never face, face setting up shots and things like that. Yeah, it just makes for that kind of stuff. And it slows gameplay down. And nobody using a sniper, I don't care who you are, nobody using a sniper is as effective objectively as someone using a real gun. Yeah. So, nobody John. runs around with a sniper playing on, the, on their BDP kit. Nobody. <laughs> so, and I were talking about it, and yeah. I was I was saying like I honestly would have no problem if they just took snipers out of the game. I mean I know they wouldn't do that, but like I I only ever really encounter snipers when it's like bad players camping and trying to get kill streaks or trying to get legit optic nation montages. Or yeah, right, like <laughs> setting up <laughs> shots. Like you see the people who spin around in circles. I mean you see them on PC. It's not as frequent. But you still see them. Spin. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that's true, Dan. And there's no aim assist. You don't. You have to right. spin full 360 rather than 270 degrees, and then your reticle doesn't lock on them like it does on console. <laughs> if you can spin a full 360 with your mouse, your sensitivity is way, way too, too high. high. Exactly. Um, also, I heard. Now, nobody clarified for this for me in this page that I linked a couple of you guys. Didn't really mention this, I don't believe. But like, there's a secondary sniper. You can have like a really what a secondary Is sniper. All the mini grizz, <laughs> the mini grizz <laughs> kit. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I mean, that's okay. That's just. What do you mean like, by secondary? So the secondary heard, weapon is. A, I heard. Is a yeah, like there's a secondary weapon that's a sniper, not like a warlord kit or whatever. I was gonna it say, was. does that tie like into the overkill? I mean, it may. I mean, I if, heard, it, if the game plays like Modern Warfare 2, every gun's a sniper rifle, anyways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No recoil. Like, let, let me shoot you. Let me shoot you across the map with my UMP and kill you in two shots. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if in Battlefield, if you're if you're accounting for the wind and bullet drop, then yeah, by all means, if you snipe me, good job. But if you're clicking, you know, mouse two, mouse one, and you shoot me with one bullet, you shouldn't kill me. What did you do to deserve that? Man makes a strong argument. Yeah, sure. you, you Alex guys are just, eh, whatever. <laughs> Alex, uh, you want to jump on Counter Strike with me while we're doing the podcast? <laughs> you don't even <laughs> like Counter Strike. My you're mouse even... doesn't move in Counter Strike. I can't use my mouse. I don't know what the hell the deal is. You're talking about Source? Oh, not one yeah. Six, yeah. Source, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Troubleshooting Source is like, uh, actually, it's not like anything because fuck, why would you do that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that it doesn't work anymore, Scott. <laughs> I'm sure you are, you haters. So, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Dan. So uh, kill streaks, though. No, as we what? know, Modern Warfare Two, uh, some of the kill streaks were a little overpowered. You might say, just a little, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, um, but it just looks like that. now I, I'm actually really loving the way they're doing this, except I have no idea how that specialist package is going to work. For those of you who don't know what the specialist package is, it's, there's three types. You don't buy kill streaks anymore. You can't set them up custom for people who haven't heard this. Um, you get it. You pick a package of kill streaks, and uh, you basically get them all at your disposal if you can get to them. Um, the specialist one, though, is very strange. So what you do is you pick your specialist package, then you pick three extra perks on top of your normal perks that you'll unlock every two kills, two, four, six. After six kills, you now have six perks, obviously. Once you reach eight kills without dying, you will gain every single perk in the game at once. What? 
That's so <laughs> Call of Duty. Wait That's a minute. That's so Call of Duty. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's like, well, we don't have them all at once, so let's just put something in the game and just uh, – all at once. All at once. We got it in there now. I just – I don't – what? I don't know if that makes you overpowered, really, though. Because the thing that really, really destroys yeah, a game that's... is like an AC-130 coming in and just... It's Von funny Ross, that yeah. they took huh. out one-man army and literally made you a one-man army. But Once you reach eight kills without dying, you will give every single perk in the game. Once yeah, you does... die, they all go away. Okay. That's a good point, though, because you don't, like... Typically, if you have people, huh. you know, camping for kill streaks and stuff, they're camping, you know, to get a certain kill streak. Whereas with the specialist package, you don't get kill streaks. Like, that is your kill streak, so you only become more effective right. at shooting, you know, shooting people. Yeah, like, I can I can actually see that one being the thing that people new to the game pick every time. Because they're just like, oh, you just get everything. <laughs> so they just pick it every time. No. And... Then they never ever get to eight kills. Is the nuke back? No, nuke nope. is nuke no. is gone. Second chance is gone. No. One man army noob tubes are gone. Unless you're all sham no wow, then they're everywhere. <laughs> but, Unless you're rubber bowling, yeah. Yeah. Um all that's gone. Martyrdom is back because there are death streaks, which I do not support. Do not support the death streak. There was martyrdom I, in Modern Warfare two, wasn't there? Yeah. And it was I mean I think I, I think I get killed by martyrdom like twice. Really? Because every, yeah. everybody used painkiller. Right, that's what it is. You're right. In Modern Warfare 2, yeah. If you die four times in a row, I don't care if you drop a grenade at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, uh, see that that's not necessarily true because there's definitely times I'll die five or six times in a row at least playing Black Ops if I'm Russian B or something playing Domination. Yeah. yeah. It, it it depends on the game type you're playing. Now, if you're playing TDM and you die four times, uninstall the game, turn the <laughs> control panel, uninstall your life, and quit playing video games forever. But if you're playing an objective game and you die and you die four times in a row, you know, good for you. You're at least trying to help your team. I've seen Dan die like I've seen Dan start games 0 and 10 to cap B, and then he'll finish the game like 40 and 17 or something. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you gotta get that B flag, dog. Well, fun. Dan's got a baby on the way. He's got to make this world safe. I'll be the first person in the hospital again for that, probably. Yeah, you will. You were last time, too. Got to uh, keep traditions going. Yeah, of course. Nice. <laughs> um, what, else, what else we got? Yeah, here? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there was a lot there of a lot. information the revealed. The only other thing that really affects the game for me... Oh, by the way, back to those kill streaks real quick for people who don't know, or listening and don't know. Uh, the assault package is basically... Every other Call of Duty game kill streaks. Right. Um, UAV. The, well, it's support strike. support actually is the only one with UAVs. Mm-hmm. Support is all non-lethal counter strikes mm-hmm. except for a stealth bomber. I believe it they says get. on the site that assault gets a UAV at three. I uh, do they? Yeah, but I mean that seems kind of weird that they have the same. Yeah, because support gets UAV counter UAV EMP the Blackbird, all that kind of stuff. A turret. Like you also get a fake fake care package, which I be trapped fake. Yeah, like it, you, it actually goes into the enemy spawn and it will <laughs> blow several of them. Like that's I don't like that. And they also you also get a drop that's a care package for your team. You, oh, care package standard care package is gone. It looks like. Um, no, it's on assault. assault. Oh, it's on assault. It's, yeah, care the package. care package you get for support drops a crate full of uh, armor, body armor for your team. So, oh, that's kind of cool. I think the way that the packages work together is kind of cool. Except if the what we just talked about, the specialist one, I don't really see a unless you have a guy running Slayer, but then you would want him with assault, right? Because you would just want him to rack up air support like crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But that that seems to be done right. Now, there are also a fourth kind of perk to go along with your normal perks called proficiencies, and those will replace some of the weapon attachments. And I didn't actually look, read up on any of the weapon attachments, to be honest with you. But um, they'll be like, you know, grip, reduce recoil, range. You can increase the range of a weapon. Uh, there's a warlord um, proficiency to get two attachments, uh, redu- it replaces hardened warlord. Um, there's a reduced sway, which is kind of cool. If you're mm. sniping, I think that's pretty much necessary. Like what Ox will be doing, just be sniping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna come out and be the first person on the podcast to say it that I'm excited for Modern Warfare Three now. 
I think Dan yeah. said it, but so you're All right, I'm, well, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah. I, I, I hope there's lean. I hope there's lean, but I know there won't be because you guys are idiots and you don't understand how important it is to PC. But it's so if, if there is if there's yeah. fucking recoil on the guns, I'm fine with that. Yeah. You'll I'm take that shooting, if they don't I'm put tired lean of in. shooting laser beams. Like <laughs> yeah. Modern Warfare 2, I'm just shooting lasers. It doesn't matter what gun you use. Everybody's like, this gun's overpowered. That gun. No, none of them are hard to use. None of them. That's true. I think that was the that was the second worst thing about Modern Warfare 2 was there's no recoil on any gun. <laughs> so I don't think it took a whole lot of skill to, sh- you know, to shoot people cross map. I love getting spazzed by a bro like when I'm on the other side of the map, too. That's fun. Modern Warfare 2. The spaz, like the shotgun ranges, were like insane. I'm I hope sure that's there's not gonna scantily change. clad gay dudes in my school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's quite, he must be tired to finally be admitting all this. I'm not excited for Modern Warfare 3. No, not at all. No, still not excited in it. No. I just want, I want, until, until I get into the game and I only play the objective and I'm getting whatever streaks, kill streaks, mm-hmm. support streaks, until I play the game the way I want it to and I'm rewarded, I won't be happy. That's a good point. Nice. So I can't be happy until I play the game. <clears throat> so I'm not saying it's a bad game because I haven't played it yet. I'm not saying it's a good game because I haven't played it yet. I can't be excited until I know. Right. Because so far there hasn't been a Call of Duty. Like Black well, Ops started counting your, your caps and defends, which is nice, you know, giving you points for it. But there still hasn't been a Call of Duty that rewards you for playing like a Battlefield. And that's all I want from Call of Duty at this point. All right. I'll I'll take take bad at Battlefield, too. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, So... Well, I love Alex. I gotta stop trolling him. He's gonna be rich one day, and I'm gonna need some money. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I already you told him. Ten days played on Modern Warfare 2 console, by the way. Good. I'm glad because that's the only game that was ever designed for console. The only FPS that played better on console than PC, and it didn't play better. There's just no dedicated servers. <laughs> Plus, um, I had to, I had to get YouTube famous somehow. Right now, I'm gonna making like you know, twelve dollars a month from it. Um, yeah. We will Is talk it? about how our millions have affected our yeah, lives. Yeah, we like, will. We will talk about that <laughs> today. It's going to be a topic. Um, all right, well, moving on from Modern Warfare 3, another topic we want to talk about was Dead Island, which released today. And the reason I think we want to talk about this is because, well, Dan and I were talking before we, we uh, started tonight about how, like, Dan, you were saying you haven't seen a game with, like, so many people being like, yeah, should like, I get this? Should I not get it? Like, what is it? Yeah, like, with... <laughs> With, with, like, Battlefield and Modern Warfare, you know, you got your camps, right? You got your Call of Duty guys, your Battlefield guys, and they all bicker over what's better and whatever. But that's those are set-in-stone franchises. Those have been around. They have a hardcore following. But I've seen the same thing with Dead Island, which is weird. I've seen people be like, nope, I'm going to buy that piece of shit. They haven't even, like, played it, obviously. Right. But, like, then I've had people, you know, they reason there, like, we don't need another zombie <laughs> game. We need another one. We got Left for Dead. That one's pretty damn good. It was just true, but like I've just never seen. I got a ton of tweets over the last week, especially since we put up the uh, posted the final the final trailer. final Dead Island trailer, yeah. the release trailer. Essentially, uh, people have just been like debating, and I've had a million questions about like, should I buy it? Should I buy it? And I don't really have an answer. I don't <laughs> have it. I know John, you you sent, you just booted it up a bit. Yeah, it, it looks pretty, but I didn't... I, I Like, zombie games and horror games, even though it's primarily an RPG action game, from what I understand, it's based on sound, and I can't have the sound cranked up, so I stopped playing until after the podcast. Right, yeah. Um, like, yeah. yeah, it's an RPG. That's it's what I was going to say, Dan. I think that's what might be hurting it some, because, like, the original trailer was, like, such a viral hit. Like, I think that trailer has, like, 5 million views on it already. Um, and it was really well done and everything, but it really looked just kind of like a... Like the, I don't know if the RPG elements were really um, touted. I guess I mean afterwards, it's more yeah, I mean, information released. But like people seem surprised. I'm even reading tweets now of people who haven't. They're like, "Wow, this is just a straight up RPG. It's less yeah, action and yeah. more of an RPG." And that, I mean, that's you know obviously nothing a short like Left 4 Dead. On it, probably yeah. I was probably rushed that day, which happens. But I delved into it a little bit. But like the um, the black rapper dude guy, that character, um, coach. You know, yeah, he. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When was he a rapper? <laughs> That's racist. Well, the guy in Dead Island is a rapper. That's racist. <laughs> it's racist to say a black um, guy's a rapper. 
But he I now, and get this, get this. His specialization is weapon spec. Yes, that all the characters have weapon specs, mm. like an RPG. Is blunts. Black rapper guys. <laughs> wow. Well, that might be a little racist. Weapon spec is blunt. I'm not joking. <laughs> wow. Well, that's the game developers right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that made by, by the way? Is Ubisoft involved in that game? Or no? Am I no. totally. Okay. Maybe I thought they were the publisher. We'd just be talking about how we. Well, the John DRM. <laughs> talking right now about how you couldn't play. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he was just shrouded in DRM. I mean, I think I'm going to get it at some point. I definitely want to see, I mean, probably tomorrow there'll be a ton of reviews out about it, or maybe there already are people that played it early, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know, what do you guys think? John, you obviously have it. Um, I'll let you know next week, but so yeah. far, so good. I mean, I've only had ten minutes into it, but yeah. it looks it looks good, and that's, you know, a big thing with, with games. You know, that's why yeah, I play them. You see one of the reasons, and things yeah. look pretty, so... I'm, I'm definitely a wait and see on this one, because... It's not like a must-buy for me, for sure, right now. Yeah. Um, also, to me, like, you know, you can't buy every game. At least I can't. And uh, I'm probably going to buy Hard Reset here. I mean, that's that's the one I'm more looking forward to. I mean, it's not coming out today. It's coming out next week, I believe. Right. But um, I'm just going to I'm gonna be spending my money on that. I don't know. I'm going to buy myself a sweet dude to play with. <laughs> <laughs> I really got a theme going on right now with Alex. <laughs> the dudes. The gay theater life. <laughs> over, what about you, Brandon? Though, as far as were you, is that a game you're thinking about picking up? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about it. Um, the thing is that it's tough for me to justify a fifty dollars purchase unless the game's got a strong multiplayer. And I mean, because this is right. pretty much just co-op, um, yeah. it's it's not definitely not a must buy for me. I mean, like I, I bought Borderlands when it was ten dollars, and I think that's the best ten dollars purchase I've ever made. But I don't think that I don't think that I would have bought it at fifty dollars. Um, and like the initial trailer was awesome, but then we heard that like there weren't going to be you know, item physics for everything and the whole, like, right. there wasn't that much that was destructible. I don't know. I feel like there's kind of been a little bit of letdown since that initial trailer. So I'm, I'm with Dan. It's kind of a wait and see for me, especially <clears> since <throat> we've got so many other games coming up to buy that, I mean, I just yeah. don't, I don't want to yeah, drop this, this money game on it. also suffers from, uh, and maybe it'll meet a lot of it, but God, it was a hype machine. Yeah. They yeah. put out like 75 trailers for the game. <laughs> like, it was insane. Yeah, I think they put out like a reverse trailer of the first trailer, like <laughs> trailer reverse Inception. Yeah, Crazy. it was like trailer Inception was heavy. Yeah, with with Dead Island, so it's one of those games. It doesn't have the burden Duke Nukem did, which nothing will ever have. Right. But I mean, that's a lot to put on a game that has any a you know has no precursor. Maybe if it's a sequel, you hype it up like that. Right. But. Well, I think because I think it just hyped. I think it was hyped with credit due to the people who put that trailer together. I mean, that yeah. trailer was probably one of the best, if not the best, trailer it's for the any only game emotional I've ever zombie seen. game. Yeah. That's what it's trying to. Be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, man, I almost, I damn near cried when I saw what the what that whole story was. <laughs> <laughs> Started bawling my eyes out. No. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so we're all kind of tentative on it, I guess, right now until and uh, maybe John yeah, so can give us a report see. next week. KB Mod's advice. John is yeah. seeing now. Right. right. Exactly. Um, right. Cool. So yeah, about wraps that up. I yeah. Guess, but. And the other so, other thing, real quick, was going to be Diablo three. I wanted to because we had an article um, from of some gameplay footage that yes. showed like the menu screens and stuff. I don't know, you yeah, and John want to talk about that. One of the that? coolest things about uh, the way... This will be... I'll start the quick hits now. We'll just right. do the quick hits now as part of that. Yeah, first of all, Diablo 3 leaked beta info. The channel of the video that we linked has more footage up now. Um, talking about different aspects. One of the cool things I saw is that the game creation is no longer just name a game and put a password on if you want it private. You'll be able to choose a game where you invite your friends, from your Battle.net friends in specifically... Then you can make a game where you can make it open to all your friends. So if you are on YouTube or something and want to play with you know subscribers or whatever, you just pop an open game, you know, tell people it's open, first ten people in are in. Yeah. So it's cool. And then you can also do fully fully public open to anyone. Um and there was also a campaign in versus mode in there. Um, versus, I don't think was active in the beta yet, but that'll be an arena system just like WoW's, which I think the Diablo 3 one 
it's done right, could have eSport potential for sure. Because people are hardcore mm-hmm. into WoW Arena. I don't know how it's True. doing now, eSport-wise, but it was huge in Burning Crusade. I mean, it was huge then, but I'm not sure where it's went from there, but... Um, it has potential. Blizzard usually does it right with that kind of thing. So well, they said that they had no intention on like having PvP be a major aspect of Diablo. It was just there for shits and giggles. Right. Well, in Diablo 2, it was just there to piss people the hell off. That was the only <laughs> reason it was there. It was mostly based on ping then because everyone was on 56k. So, um, what else we got? Uh, uh, Dusex is getting DLC in October. So if you have that game and you've played through, uh, the DLC is going to be focused around a time in the story when, uh, I guess, Adam Jensen disappears basically for three days, goes MIA in the actual story of Human Revolution. It'll be those three days. That's what gonna, the DLC is going to be. It's um, an awfully quick turnaround for DLC. Yeah, yeah. wow. Well, it seems like they had it in mind because they had the code in the title screen. Well, right. That's that's my <laughs> point. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Mm. But... Um, then what else we got? It's oh, like yeah. withholding lunch and calling it DLC. <laughs> <laughs> withholding lunch. Like you kind of had to give me lunch at some point. You were going to do it anyways. <laughs> but now I got to pay for it? <laughs> there was actually a video, a, a Dusex like machinima that was done with the old game that basically was like, uh, J.C. Denton, I think that was his name. <laughs> J.C. Denton would go up to like a key character in the plot in the original game, and then he wouldn't be able to rescue them because he needed to buy more DLC. It was funny. <laughs> that was clever. I don't know who posted that. It was on PC Gamer. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It was awesome. And then uh, also we had a new, and we've been shitting on this game for months, let me tell you. <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic. Yeah, we were. Uh, ever since that first trailer came out. We've been kind of down on it because mainly it looked like it came out in about 2002, and uh, the voice acting. Oh my god, the voice acting! But um, recently, the Old Republic, uh, we posted it. I think yeah, today. <laughs> I posted it today. Um, had a 10 minute walkthrough of one of the raids, and uh, I gotta say, it looks pretty damn polished there. Um, I'm a lot more positive on it having seen that. They're using tried and true MMO formulas with it. So if you're familiar with WoW, of the tank healer DPS setup, looks like that's intact. Um, looks like they have raid frames. Brandon was telling me that it looks a lot like Star Wars Galaxies, the UI. I don't yeah, know. Just, just that particular UI they showed, like the blue the blue UI in that trailer, it looked very, very similar to like a specific UI theme in Galaxies. But uh, for the new game's sake, I hope it plays much better than Galaxies. <laughs> it does. Well, it yeah, does. I'm, I'm sure it looked say. like a WoW clone. Other than the say. UI, it looks very similar to WoW as yeah. far as the mechanics. No, so. and that's good. If you're going to say some, it's similar to WoW, to me that's that's a compliment because WoW pretty much hits every note correctly with the MMOs. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, a WoW with a Star Wars theme, you're going to have a huge fan base there. So if they yeah. can execute well, then... You know, it'll be successful. So, and that's all John can say about it. It's it's not nearly as bad as the initial uh, impression impressions were left upon you. It's so, it'll it'll be good. Changed me around. It looks good. So nice. That's it for this week. That's all the quick hits. It was actually a slower week because pretty much Call of Duty just yeah overtook everything, ran over everything. So <laughs> quick yeah. hit one of my articles from this week. Oh wait. I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> you were one about a gay dude, but we weren't able to post it due to yeah, its graphic we nature. To, yeah. We're not really <laughs> blogger was off. like, whoa, whoa. We're vetting this right now. This is way too homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, for the rant section here, once again, we're going to do a, a community or just all of us jump in on this topic. Rant of the week. I don't know what we're yelling about. I had a really good conversation with a couple people um, this week about... Name the, drop, dog. Dude, I don't need the name <laughs> drop. I don't need the name drop. All right, fine. I was having a conversation. We were playing Magic, and uh, me, Hutch, and I forget who else was there. I don't know if all sham know WoW, perhaps. I think he was. reverse name dropped and dissed somebody. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. No, all sham was there, too. We were just talking about... Um, 
Oh, Dunkus. Sorry, Dunkus was there. We were all playing Magic. This is the only reason I really use my console anymore is to play Magic the Gathering. Um, and we were talking about the whole ad campaign um, with Battlefield, and like the we we're just all kind of agreeing that the approach of like trying to take down Call of Duty is just such a wrong approach for a game that the both of them have their merits and they're both different. But if, if they're trying to hype up their game and try to compare it to Call of Duty, you're just going to fail because it's a different, it's a slower paced game. It's a lot more tactical of a game. And like, you're going to get these people that are going to jump on the bandwagon, get the game. And this, they're just going to be like, well, this isn't anything like what I thought it would be. Cause maybe they're coming from the Call of Duty mindset or whatever. I just right. think, um, I know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense. So we're all just kind of, kind of saying that and saying, I think it's really going to end up backfiring on Battlefield is my opinion on it. And we're all kind of in agreement on that, but I want to get your guys' take on that. It's not really a rant, I guess, but kind of, cause. Well, I don't mm-hmm. know. I think, I think it was definitely the wrong way to go to bat. Mudslinging off doesn't often work well and doesn't right. often look good in any sort of campaign. Nope. So, um, that was definitely. Except a- if it's wet and you're in t-shirts. Yeah, then it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Oh, you know I will. I, I will say. Sorry, I will say one thing. I won't. Um, I won't say who it was. This was not anyone in the group that I was with, but someone told me that they had a uh, they had a Modern Warfare Three press badge on. I guess I don't know. If it was for some behind the access stuff, and they got in the battlefield line when they were at PAX um, PAX West or PAX Prime, and uh, they they were like, "No, you, you can't go in here. You got to get out of the line." They wouldn't let them go in and see the battlefield stuff because they had a Modern Warfare Three press badge on. so i was like so they were saying they were just saying like um that was brought up in this conversation i forget who that happened to but it was like you know i to me that's like way too far like why do that like what does it matter like that's just unbelievable to me but anyway brandon i just i just want to fly airplanes (laughs) yeah jets that does look sweet yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's such a different game that yeah. uh, I understand Battlefield wants it, that they they crave the success that Call of Duty has had, and uh, I think that they're still going to get it. Like, I think this is prob this is easily going to be the biggest Battlefield title ever, but I don't think that's going to be um, a credit to those types of kind of petty things. Um, right. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be big because of all the gameplay that people have seen and the actual merits of the game. Uh, it's. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it was the, really the right way for them to go about it. Um, and the thing is that Activision hasn't really come back with anything, because I mean, because they're sitting on top. So it kind of looks like uh, like the younger brother, you know, trying to trying Get to sit in the older brother's seat. Uh, that's a, that's a terrible analogy, but. Uh, well, it's kind of <laughs> like. I mean. <laughs> I just I just don't like the way they went about it. And then and then to go about it like that and then take away one of the now obviously they're focusing on every platform, but for our purposes here on on the PC side, uh then dropping the bomb you're not gonna have dedicated or a, a server browser in your game, like inside the game. To do uh, that it's yeah, like you're like talking all this shit <clears throat> and trying to basically start something with Activision and then uh Piss off the crowd that was going to make a game large. Yep, and then <laughs> and then Modern Warfare Three says, "Well, here's dedicated servers," and really, that's all we wanted. <laughs> like, yeah, honestly. Well, so, I think like, that would have been sitting huge. in your older brother's seat and forgetting pants, and like the chafe <laughs> thing that occurs. You know? <laughs> what? Wow. What? I don't even know what's happening. Well, I think. Uh, <laughs> It seems to me like like at the Battlefield team, the guys that are actually making the game and then the people that are putting together the trailers, those are the people that are going to be responsible for that game selling millions because all of the other decisions that have been made with the server browser and um, you know, and all the other kind of questionable decisions that have surrounded Battlefield 3, like... Uh, you know, ultimately, it's going to come down to the fact that the trailers and all the like the actual gameplay has been phenomenal. The rest of it has seemed kind of boneheaded. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, we got to fault EA a lot on that, really. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. I'm going to get both games and play them both. So I've despite what people on Twitter think, everyone <laughs> yeah, thinks Dan I'm going to just on like. Twitter. I'm going to buy Battlefield 3 and then just shit on it and flush it down my toilet. That's what Twitter thinks. Yeah. No, I'm going to play the game, bros. I'm going to buy both of them, but then I'm not going to play either one because Tribes is going to be amazing. Well, there you go. There you go. Yes, very likely. F2P. Yeah. CSGO. 
Yeah, that's true too. Actually, yeah, I, I should say like I'm like. Anyway, if CS goes at all and it's playable, I won't be playing either game very much, unfortunately. Modern True. Warfare Three or <coughs> or Battlefield. Be quite a bit. Yeah. You know, Battlefield Three will take the third seat because I won't feel like firing up t- ten web browsers and then the game as well. To just- <laughs> <laughs> but the game boots really fast, Dan. The game does boot really fast. Yeah, that really um, makes it better. It really makes it better. I've heard that the alt tab functionality is just is unheard of compared to other games. It's gonna be awesome when I have like a flash blocker on or something. I can't get my game and then I can't figure. Wasn't out Wasn't that why. like an official thing they were talking about the alt tab capabilities? Like, what didn't was that from the company? Yes, from Dice it was. itself. Yeah, they, yeah, they tweeted tabs. they tweeted that the game opens really fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're even getting into talking about alt tab ability in your game because you don't have an in-game server browser, anyway. Uh, that is an unbelievable decision to me still, but whatever. <laughs> Pretty much all of us are probably going to get... Yeah, we're going to buy the game anyway, so, so for sure. All right, bros. All right. Well, we've got to move on right now to uh, with our last 15 minutes or so to the Twitter questions. And once again, you guys have have flooded our... Uh, yeah, we got lots of good ones this week. Flooded our Twitter. So, Dan, yeah, you got some good ones. And now it's time for Twitter questions with the KB Mod Podcast. All right, here we go. We'll go um Get it up. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with this one. <laughs> if you weren't so famous and millionaires for being <laughs> PC gamers, what do you think you would be doing right now? <laughs> not not <laughs> recording a podcast cuz I'd be rich. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm recording from my yacht right now. Yeah. And uh yeah, I wouldn't be recording from my gold-plated Bentley. That, that's for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't be living in a studio apartment attending school with a bunch of gay dudes. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, guys. Uh, we don't make much money off of this. So no. there you go. That Some is- of us make no money. Yeah. Zero. Hey. <laughs> AdSense, no, actually, no. Car, car video. I forgot. Car I heard video. Like car video. Five bucks this one. We're all professional YouTubers here. <laughs> <laughs> And that was from Moose Man 19. Moose Man, we are not rich and famous. No. Just there you go. We're just not. <laughs> I do like men, though. Yeah. Men? Whoa, there. you should totally come here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's a legit help question for a bro out there. Um, There's an awesome Twitter handle, by the way. Uh, my current video card is worse than, obviously, Jesus' GT220. So what card would you suggest to upgrade to on a budget? 560 Ti without question on a budget. That's a strong card. I would There's say the not, cheapest, the cheapest card, card. I would say would be I think like a 6870. I think yeah. you can get them for like uh, for like 150 yeah. bucks, yep. or maybe that's like a 6850. 6850. Yeah, Still, 60, yeah, 6850 is like the cheapest I would recommend anyone go. If you don't have the money, you know, like 150 or so to spend, just keep saving up. Like, don't buy a sub hundred dollar video card. But 560 Ti is the best bang for the buck card on the market. Yep, for sure. Yeah. I have that card, and John wouldn't like it, but if you like playing video games at, you know, a decent FPS, above 60, then it's there you a good go. card. 200 plus or get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was from Master Choda. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is a strong name, man. <laughs> this one's for John, and I'm actually going to jump in on this one, too, because it's relevant to me. <clears throat> Uh, John, would you rather root for the Flyers or only be able to play console? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'd rather only play console. Yeah, wow. me too, dude. I knew that yeah. would be rough I would do that. nothing but play NHL for the rest of my life as the Penguins, <laughs> and I would, I would play Stanley Cup playoffs constantly, and I would beat the Flyers just like we do every time we play them in the playoffs. Oh, my God. Scott, when's <laughs> the last time you won a Stanley Cup, buddy? I don't want to talk about it, all right? <laughs> Let me just say I might have been a little overzealous when we pulled our when we got our goalie this year. And then traded all of our good players away. Was a little defensive, but now I think it's just going to be a horrible season. So I've, <laughs> I've come around. You're worse than the Leafs, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> On paper, yes, but we'll see. We'll see. I still think we can make playoffs. I don't think we can do anything and they're in the playoffs. This, this, uh, this next one is uh, also. <clears throat> Wait, hold up one second. Okay, that was from that question was from uh, I forgot to read his Twitter handle. That was from Yummy Man Ass. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh I, go to, oh, I go to school with him. I passed him. <laughs> he was on his way to movement. I was it's on my so way to yummy. movement. Uh, okay, this one is actually for John as well, but we can all jump in on this. This is a food question because John actually tweeted the other day. He went, uh, he went to a local establishment here um, 
and got some hot wings. You could throw out their name, or are you just going to be like that and not throw out their name? Quaker Steak and Lube. Quaker Steak and Lube. Okay, they're pretty famous. Which are not even close to the best wings in Pittsburgh. No, they're awful. Um, Oh, wow. (laughs) They are pretty bad. It sucks because every food show that comes to Pittsburgh... Yeah, they always go there. Quaker Steak, Yeah, it's just not very good. Huh. Like... (laughs) Um, but Am this I guy the only one that heard steak and lube? What's it called? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's Quaker called. Quaker steak and lube. Steak and lube? That's not a good combination <laughs> at all. Tube steak and lube. What are you doing with that steak? <laughs> Basically, he says he doesn't understand why people eat hot foods. Because when you leave, you feel better about yourself knowing that you conquered something. It's the same thing as like, climbing a mountain. You fucking really did like- something that you didn't think you could do. I like I the like taste the of hot food, though. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. But you don't like the taste of triple atomic wings. No, actually, I've had atomic wings, John, and those they were good. Just taste, they just taste bad to me. They were well. That was that. You probably had them when it was a wet sauce. Now it's a dry rub. Oh, it's a dry rub now. Okay, yeah. yeah this was years and years ago. So yeah, the, the triple atomics just taste like a lighter in your mouth on your yeah. tongue. <laughs> but the the regular atomics actually have a decent flavor to them now, so I'd recommend them. I like but, KY jelly if we're talking about lube. <laughs> <laughs> Astroglide's far superior. You know, Vaseline's an underrated lubricant as well. That was from Sherblock, but do you guys like hot foods? I know John does. I like like Thai curry. I Brandon's from Texas. Curry. He has to. Yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, you know some hot Mexican food like hot salsa. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not a huge fan of like really hot wings. Yeah, it either. just doesn't have like any to taste to me. Them. If they're too yeah. hot, I can't. I, I mean, like I do curry? like hot food, but not atomic stuff. Curry's fucking delicious. Oh, I love, yeah. I love curry. I like drunken I noodles. Food. It's a Thai food. It's amazing. Yeah, mm. yeah it's good, oh. too. Um, I went down to Mexico last summer. Went down to Cabo San Lucas, and uh, we had habanero relish. Oh, God, that sounds yeah. delicious. And uh, it was the dude The dude who served it, he's like, you might want to, like, take a little bit of that. Like, not much. My buddy Jeremiah put, like... A shitload on something. I was like, yeah, fuck it. So I put like a bunch on like a tortilla or something, and uh, my mouth didn't stop burning until like the next day. Like it was ridiculous. It was just yellow and smelled like death. It was amazing. <clears throat> the t- the taste was great, but man. All right, what else we got here? Um, Mister Powers asks, do you guys have any tattoos? <clears throat> I do not. No, nope, I nope. do not. Nope. That's it. That was quick. Well, that was, All right. that was <laughs> quick. <laughs> I've had stuff pressed hard against my face. <laughs> that is, Alex has had a mushroom stamp on numerous occasions. <laughs> but it only left a mark. It was like a henna tattoo. It only left a mark for a couple hours. <laughs> it's not permanent. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's one from another one from Mr. Powers. Double dipping on you, bro. Wow. Send me money or something. Jeez. All right. Uh, do you guys plan on playing Guild Wars 2? Yes. No. I don't. Nick I Fenton don't. finally cared about this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that that was mentioned. <laughs> His Guild Wars 2 radar just went off. Nothing against yeah. Guild Wars. I just never got into it. And I, yeah, I was never into no, the other games. No, I, I liked it. I played it to, like, level 20, but then there was, like, shit to do after that. Mm. Yeah. So, it will be free to play, so that's... Right. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a $49 purchase, and then you can get infinite playtime out of it, so I don't really see reason to not play it, to at least try it. Yeah, I'll probably wait and see like how it reviews, and maybe give it a few months, have them pass the initial bugs out, but, you know, free to play, I'll, I'll probably give if it a I, try. If I can get 50 hours out of a $50 game, then, you know, whatever, it's worth my purchase. Yeah, exactly. All right, this one's kind of serious, kind of serious. Brandon, you can abstain for professional reasons if you'd like. But um, <laughs> oh man, are you guys? Uh, well, this is this says marijuana, but we'll just go with uh, just kind of drugs because that's what it'll turn into anyway. Are you are you pro drug, anti drug? What are you? What's your stance? My anti drug's heroin. <laughs> <laughs> that's your anti drug. <laughs> you and Lane Staley, man. That's pretty strong. Yeah, I've I've battled through addiction before with Oxycontin, so I don't do any drugs anymore except this delicious beer that's in front of me. I smoked pot for a good 10 years of my life, probably from like uh, 21 to, or like, I guess I guess it was like 8 years, from like 12 or 13 until I was 21. I started smoking pot when I was 12 for the first time. I didn't really smoke it correctly, though. 
<laughs> first time I smoked pot correctly, I was like 15. So I guess like five years of heavy pot usage, mm. probably four or five times a week. I haven't touched it in five years now, though, and I have really no mm. intention on doing so. I just like beers. Yeah, I love beers, man. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I've never done any drugs or cigarettes or anything, but uh, I'm actually I, like it's not an it's not an issue I care about. But I'm probably pro like legalization just for yeah, totally economic good. reasons. Like I would I would be fine with them making that legal and then just taxing it. It would also just, like, be safer cigarettes. for the users if it was monitored. If yeah. it was regulated, just like anything yeah. else. Yeah, so, but I mean, like hard drugs. I'm I, yeah. I'm against those. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I like to My say I'm for... school. Okay, you go. No, go, no, go ahead. I want to hear this gay comment you're about to make. No, it wasn't gay. My theater school built a smoking shed in the back. <laughs> for everything or? And not for the... cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> okay, right. Is All that right. to ostracize the smokers or to make yeah. them happy? Oh, it was, it was to make them happy because they were it's smoking around... Yeah, they were smoking around the school, and they were just like, just go to the shed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's a private college. I mean, you can light up in the school. They're not going to mind. I mean, not like that's a cool thing to do, but it's a, it's a private college theater school. Oh, I'm sure so that's a cool thing to do at art school. You there's can just... inspiration, yo. Yeah. yeah. There's a shit ton of people that, that smoke a lot of pot. and Fucking stick a syringe in your butthole, shoot some heroin, and <laughs> let's get right. <laughs> Dude, dude that's a good right idea. In. You know how, like, if you bend over, you can suck air into your ass and make yourself fart? <laughs> I want to, like, do, do, do coke my asshole. Coke and heroin aren't creative drugs, though. Dude, that go, that would go right in your bloodstream. You'd be so... You'd be destroyed instantly. Wow. Straight into the butt. Yeah? The, um, who was it? Johnny Knoxville almost died doing that with uh, with beers. Remember that? Yeah, that's true. Which I guess. Um, it was Steve-O. God. I'm sorry, Johnny Knox. Yeah, sorry, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm wow, <laughs> Alex. Dude. Alex you jumped in on the jacket. Listen, do you really? think that I would remember the time when a guy showed his asshole on video? That's true. Of course I would. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> I'm for. Uh, I'd say that legalization of marijuana, I think, is fine, and I'm also for the legalization of any any kind of drug at all. I just think, I think we'd be a lot nicer of a society if everyone was always. Under the influence of some kind of no, alcohol. nobody, <laughs> nobody gets violent and angry and kills somebody when they're when they're stoned. Yeah, they exactly. usually go play some some sort of video game, eat it's terrible combinations of food, and go to sleep. Yep, yep. And your your and I'm gonna say this from experience: your coordination is not screwed up at all when you're high. You can drive fine. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm totally for the not that KB mod recommends that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, we're not reckoning. No. <laughs> I will say Seriously. what really stopped me from and I've smoked pot a few times in my life, never regularly, but I will say what really turned me around was watching all those government ads, those PSAs about yeah. what happens okay. when you smoke pot, you know, you just basically never move again for the rest of your life and you become like a chair. That really <laughs> impacted me. And that's why the only downside of smoking <laughs> a lot of pot is you fucking your puts in budget goes up. Yeah. You, you can't afford that shit after a while. It's expensive. Because you're buying so much of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for legalization. I, I think we waste so much money arresting people smoking weed who aren't doing oh, anything. Oh, dude, locking them away for years and, you know, yeah. 100K plus a year in the system. It's, it's insane. Just let that dude buy his dime bag and smoke it in the comfort of his home. Like, <laughs> I totally agree. So we don't recommend you do heroin. No. Or any drugs. We don't recommend you do anything. No. But we're for legalizing anything. Officially, the the product we can get behind is water. I, I can get behind water. water. Pretty bu- Vitamin yeah. water power. C. I will back it one hundred percent. All right. Next question. Also, was dra- a dragon dragon fruit sobies. Delicious. Dragon fruit sobe is good. I had one of those the other that day. That was from Annie on that question. And all oh. beer. Drink it. <laughs> oh, what time are we? Are on a light? We got we got now. Let's do a few more down. Like three. Yeah, three, there's four some minutes. really good ones left. That all right. sucks because there's not much time, but. Um, who is your favorite non-gaming YouTuber and why? Hmm. This one might be quick. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> somebody really, Louis Taylor. I don't. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't really have a favorite YouTuber, but my favorite YouTube video of all time is my ukulele gently weeps. Yeah, that's a strong vid. That guy good. kills it on that ukulele. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. that, that is... I enjoy the Epic Mealtime videos. They're good guys, and I like Kyle's videos as well. Yeah. 
Let's say um, I was a big. I'm a big shake. Hi, Justine. Fan. You a big guy, Justine fan? <laughs> I, dude, don't don't bring me down this nice. road. Don't tempt me. She wanted. She tried to kill me already, so I'm not gonna get into that <laughs> via Twitter. She wrote knife to me, so. But uh, no, I like Shay Carr. Like even like I watched him for a while, and even though, um, I would say he's gotten a lot more. Um, I mean, because he's making a living off it, and this is what he does. So some of the stuff he does, I'm kind of like, yeah. But I still, I just as a personality, I think him and his family are really entertaining. I still like like Shay Carr. Well, I thought Ray you William been Johnson. The same as me. Mm. Why? What is yours, Brandon? I just said it. Brittany Louise Taylor with all the videos you tweet out. Oh of hers. my God! That, I have that, no choice but to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> so that so from my tweeting out her videos, you've really become a fan. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I watch every one of her videos. Dude, I think Shout Out Sunday might be one of the best best produced videos on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, I watch Ray William Johnson because I'm incapable of watching videos myself. And need commentary about them. Oh yeah, about you know recapping yeah, the viral videos, videos of yeah. the week. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I used to like this show that was on. It was like a running kind of web series on YouTube called Man in the Box, and it was uh, by some comedy troupe from Cleveland actually. Um, but it's hysterical if you can find it. Still, I don't even know if the videos are still on YouTube. They were running for like three or four years. Um, that that was really funny. Uh, I watch a lot of parkour videos because I'm an idiot, but I like them. <laughs> so there's Derek that. I don't comedy. really. Oh, Derek comedy. Mm, Derek comedy true. makes the best videos on YouTube. Well, they used to at least. But uh, I don't really watch much YouTube anymore. Um, but Once yeah, you're in it and you're doing it. It's funny how you're watching of YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's for me. Like I used to watch videos a lot, and now like well, I was on night shift, dude. So I just oh, that's true. Yeah, sit there. I couldn't watch like no. couldn't bring myself to just watch it Netflix all night or something. So yeah. watch YouTube videos, but yeah, my my honest answer is I like I don't really watch that much YouTube aside from videos that people tweet out. I, I just don't like I don't really watch much else. Do you just watch your own car video over and over again for that ad sense? I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That is something I do. <laughs> So, all right, we got all right, we really should wrap this up soon, but Dan, if you got okay. one or two more. All right, this one uh what what gaming moment was your most memorable moment ever? Kind of like in a game maybe or like mm. a boss fight that you remember in a game or mm. um you know, some moment some moment in a game. And I'll actually start cuz I knew this instantly when I saw the question. Yeah. And John John actually might agree with me on this. Brandon too. <laughs> Nefarian first kill. Uh, no, the very first kill though was ridiculous. The most ridiculous moment though, memorable, was the first time I ever saw Ragnaros emerge in Molten Core. Yes. The most yeah. epic thing I had ever seen in a game. It was so ridiculous. This like giant model, it was the biggest model in the game at the time, just rose out of <laughs> the fire Make pit. You shit there, your pants. And what? then just shit all over you because you just died so hard the first time you fought it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that was so epic. <laughs> I would actually have to agree with that, probably. Hmm. For me, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring you back to the days of the PlayStation. Uh-oh. The original PlayStation. And a game that will be so obscure, I am guarantee probably no one here has ever played it, but a little game called Star Wars Jedi Power Battles. All right, now wow. hear me out on this. Wow. Now... We, I played this game, like, you know, back then, my parents wouldn't buy me games. I had to save up for all my games. So, you know, like, when you bought a game, like, that was it. Like, that, that's just all I played. So I played Jedi Power Battles. It wasn't particularly hard. There were a couple sequences that were pretty hard. You have a lightsaber. It's basically from the first, taken from the Phantom Menace yeah. uh, movie. So you get to the end of the game, and you have a battle with Darth Maul, and I could never beat him. Like, he... Whatever I did, I couldn't beat him. He was just too good with the lightsaber. Well, I figured out um, at one point, like I for some reason had a had a blaster in the game that was basically like a chain gun. And what I figured out you had to do, at least the way I beat it, I you just hold down the chain gun. You have like 300 rounds, and he blocks the bullets with his lightsaber. But as he blocks them, he gets pushed farther and further back. And the goal was basically to to beat him down into like you know at the end of the movie where he falls down that shaft. Right. Um, you're supposed to do that. So I, I cheated the game by not using the lightsaber and shooting 300 rounds as he kept blocking it, and then he just <laughs> fell off the edge. And I've never been more happy for beating a boss in any game. I think that's the best story ever. 
The guys who coded that battle yeah. probably coded Ubisoft's DRM. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was like, so, because it was like, oh, man, I like had a glitch, and I beat the game on top of it, and I figured out an Easter Oh, dude. I lived off that high for, for a <laughs> long time, so that's mine. <laughs> Brandon? Um, my favorite, my most memorable moments, probably back in the Tribes days, I remember, like, some really epic... Uh, Battles on. I'm, I'm guessing no one will know what I'm talking about here, but uh, an old Ultra Renegades map called No Rail, No Fog, uh, which was just like you're you're way up in the air and you've got a jet uh, like boost around to cat flags. And I just remember some really epic like sniping battles as you're jetpacking through the air. Um, and then also ET like a lot of ET matches. Uh, I just oh, remember yeah. being really like really in the zone. And uh, I mean those are. I just have I have a lot of memorable moments, but that's pro- those are probably the two that stand out. Nice. Bioshock, Alex. Yes. Would you kindly? <laughs> <laughs> the would you kindly reveal is up there for sure. Not that I, there's a reveal of any kind, but if you know what I'm talking about. Right. Also, the first game I ever had for PlayStation Two because I was obsessed with the Matrix was Enter the Matrix. Terrible game. But when I first went into bullet time and like ran across the wall, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the awesome. The Wachowski brothers I was like, are gods. I know. I was like 10 years old and I was doing bullet time. I'm like, I'm fucking Neo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't even think you got to play as Neo in that game. But uh, anyways, what did you call him? Like? <laughs> so that was uh, Gandhi14 with that question. I thought that was a really good question, actually. Because I could go, if we had more time, I could just go on and on. Yeah, yeah, I have so many lot. memorable moments. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think that's... Uh, All right. Well, she riz out. Yeah, we uh, we definitely are uh, quite a Gay. bit. Gay. Are you yes, unwrapping definitely. Christmas presents? Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's going on over there? Or wrapping them, rather. My fucking dog, dude. She knocked over a bag of chips, and I'm picking them up. <laughs> you're eating them up is what you're doing. I'm eating the ones she knocked on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> They're red uh-huh. hot chips, and if I don't eat them, she's gonna. Because I'm not picking them up. If, I, if I'm picking something up, it's going in my mouth hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing to live by. If you pick it up, put it in your mouth. I think that's pretty. I good. do that Monday to Friday. <laughs> sometimes on Saturday. <laughs> so do we? Do we wrap uh, this up? Yeah. I, all right. Let's uh, never <laughs> never wrap it up. It feels better when you don't. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. We won't wrap it up, and we'll just say we will see you next week. See you guys. Later. 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 Bye. Hello, gents, and thanks once again for tuning into the podcast this week. If you need to uh, find the podcast, you can find it on podbean.com, our front page, or search iTunes for KB Mod. If you need your PC gaming fix during the week, you can go to kbmod.com or follow us on Twitter at KB Mod Gaming. We'll see you next week, guys.